welcome back to Fantastic Forest with Miss Liberty. Today we're going to be having a look at different types of deciduous trees. Before we have a look at some examples of what deciduous trees there are and some of their characteristics, we're just going to have a quick recap of what a deciduous tree is. So again, we've been speaking about in our video that there are two main kinds of trees, the, the deciduous trees and the coniferous trees. We just did a video about coniferous trees and identifying them. Uh, this is the deciduous tree equivalent. So we need to remember that deciduous trees change a lot throughout the season. It's one of the main differences that we can see when we com compare them to the conifer trees. Now, deciduous trees obviously lose their leaves in the winter. They have a different structure, so their leaves are a lot bigger and a lot flatter. They tend to grow fruit instead of cones. Remember, our conifers have the name conifers because it sounds comes from the same place as cone. Um, but our deciduous trees, they usually grow fruit and there's big changes throughout the seasons. So we're going to have a look a little bit about what some of these trees are and how we can identify different kinds of deciduous trees. Now, the first kind of deciduous tree we're going to look at is one of the most common trees that you can find in the UK, and that is an oak tree. Now, there's lots of different kinds of oak trees, but we're just going to be looking at the general characteristics of all of these trees today. So if we start out looking at the bark of an oak tree, so oak trees are usually quite big as trees go and their bark is normally got ridges on. So it kind of goes in and out. It's quite bumpy and it develops with age. So the bark has more um, things sticking out of it as the tree gets older. Now, I'm sure you all know what the fruit of an oak tree is because it's a lovely acorn. So it's kind of a special kind of nut fruit that has a cap on it and it grows individually on trees. We also have a special kind of leaf that makes oak trees very easy to identify because it has a very um, unique kind of leaf. And that is this shape here. So it's kind of got a, a sort of wave pattern going down the sides. It kind of goes in and out a lot. So when you see both acorns and these kinds of leaves where you have the, the motion of it going in and out and kind of flowing along both sides, then you can tell that you have an oak tree. So next time you're out in the forest and you see either acorns on the floor or these kinds of leaves, then you can look around and find your oak tree. Now we're going to have a look at the ash tree, which is another deciduous tree that you can find in the UK um, in most places. Um, now this tree I like to, to refer to as the perfectionist tree and that's because every single characteristic is very specific and it's all perfectly lined up and symmetrical. It loves when things are perfectly in their place. So if we have a look at some of the characteristics of the ash trees, if we look at the bark we can see that, that it creates these diamond shapes all the way along the trunk and they are usually perfectly uniform. If you look at the ash tree trunk it almost looks like a pattern, it looks like somebody almost painted on the trunk, um, it looks very um, unnatural in a way um, although it's just one of the many wonders of nature. The fruit is uh, ash keys. Now ash keys are these. You may have seen them before. They kind of, it looks a little bit like a leaf, but actually it's a green pod which contains the seed of the tree and the shape of it allows it to travel in the wind um, and disperse to help grow trees in other places. Now these are called ash keys because they grow in bunches, so there's a lot of them that grow all next to each other and it looks a little bit like a bunch of keys, which is why they're known as ash keys. And last but not least, we have the leaves on the plants. Now, this is one of the many reasons I think this tree is a sort of perfectionist, because the way it grows its leaves, it grows them, um, they have compound leaves, which means they grow leaves all together, a little bit like it bunches together its fruit, it kind of bunches together its leaves as well. But ash trees are very specific because their leaves are 
always perfectly opposite each other. So as you go down the branches, you can see in the pictures here, they have perfect leaves all the way opposite each other. So you will always have a bunch. Normally they're in bunches of five to nine. And you'll have two leaves opposite each other along the branch and then one at the very end, creating this lovely pattern. So next time you're out in the woods, do make sure you look for these signs because ash trees are very fascinating and they are very beautiful to look at because of all of these um, nice patterns and the symmetry we can find. Now we're going to have a look at the elm tree. Now, I like to think of the elm tree as the ash trees, perhaps. Um, unorganized little brother because they are very similar however the elm tree is not quite so much of a perfectionist as the ash tree that we just spoke about so again it does have that gray colored bark that has the different patterns on it although it doesn't have a uniform pattern so it doesn't have that nice diamond pattern all over it's normally kind of a little bit messy a little bit all over it, the place you might be able to find some diamond shapes here and there but it's not as nicely and perfectly done as on an ash tree also the fruit looks quite similar it's again in these sorts of pods so we have the Samara, which is the name of these, these seed pods. So it's these kind of green, almost they almost look like leaves, but they actually have the seeds inside that help them travel around. Again, same as the ash tree. And their leaves are also very similar. They're compound leaves. Again, remember that means that lots of leaves grow on, a, on, a, on one same branch and connect to, you, to the one same branch. The thing about elm trees that makes them different from ash trees, one of the differences we can look for to differentiate between these two trees is elm trees never have their leaves opposite each other. So when they're growing on these on these stems, when they're growing as compound leaves, they don't grow opposite each other like our uh, well, like our ash tree. Our elm tree kind of takes it in turns. So you have one leaf and it takes it in turns growing along the stem. So when you're out in the woods and you find a tree that maybe has this special kind of bark, when you see these compound leaves, you might be wondering if it's an ash tree or an elm tree, but using it, these clues, you should be able to figure it out. Okay, the chestnut tree is a big, strong kind of tree. It has very smooth gray bark. It grows these special green spiky balls um, where its fruit grows and its seeds are. These are known as chestnuts. You might know chestnuts. Some people like to roast them up around Christmas time and have them as a nice festive snack. They have very special leaves. So their leaves are quite long, almost in the shape of a canoe. So they kind of get narrowed towards the ends and they're almost a little bit spiky around the edges, but they grow individually. So when they grow to the branch, they are separately attached to the branch. They aren't clumped together like we've seen in some of our trees. Now the horse chestnut tree. Again, it's got a, it's called a horse chestnut tree because it is similar to the chestnut tree. Some people might know this tree as a conker tree. And the bark is again very smooth, very grey, so it looks very similar to the chestnut tree. The fruit is a green spiky ball again that has a fruit that looks like chestnuts, but they aren't chestnuts, they are conkers. They're very, they're, they're different. You cannot eat conkers. Um, and they have leaves. The leaves are the biggest clue to help us know the difference between a conker tree and a chestnut tree, okay? And that is this. The leaves are, again, they're compound leaves. So remember that means there's lots of leaves joined to one stem. So here they almost form a sort of hand pattern. If you look, all of these leaves kind of going out in a sort of circle around this one stem, they look a little bit different. So when you have a tree, when you have maybe especially this fruit that is around in the autumn, that is very signature to these two kinds of trees, the leaves really help you tell the difference between what kind of tree it actually is. Now, another very beautiful tree and one that's quite easy to identify if you're just starting out looking at different trees in the woods is the silver birch. Now, the silver birch has this name because of the colour of its bark. So the bark has this kind of white, almost silvery colour to it, and it's very thin. 
Lots of people like to use the bark to help start fires and things because it is very, very good for that because of how thin it is. Um, and it dries up well and it's just very, very useful to, to use when you're trying to start a fire. It has a special kind of fruit called a catkin, which are these kind of long nut -like kind of pods which will travel around in the wind and allow the tree to make new trees. And their leaves are quite um, easy to identify as well because they just have these trees just randomly on their branches. They don't, they're not compound leaves, they're just individual leaves in this lovely sort of triangle shape um, with edges that are a little bit um, kind of jagged. Um, so it's quite easy to identify a silver birch if you are out in the woods. Maple trees are also quite easy to identify. There's lots of ways you can identify them. So if we look at the bark, there's usually kind of big lines that you can see running up and down the whole trunk. Their fruit are these paired uh, samaras, which again, it's kind of like giving the seed wings so it can fly further away from the tree and it has these special leaves which are very iconic you might recognize them from the canadian flag um they have a they have a maple leaf on their flag a canadian maple leaf so these maple leaves normally have lobes so that basically just means it has different sections you can see that you can kind of break it down into different sections most maple leaves have somewhere between two but somewhere between three and five lobes um, on their leaves and they're normally quite defined you can usually see the different sections dip in quite a lot in the middle the sycamore tree again is quite easy to identify by its bark similarly to the silver birch we saw earlier it has a special kind of bark that usually peels off of trees it has a sort of gray brown bark that peels off and underneath it has a kind of beige white color it has two different kinds of fruits that grow on the tree it has these um samaras similar to what we saw on the maple tree um, that has wings that helps it travel around and reproduce it also has these um, ball fruits that also help play different roles um, in spreading seeds as well. It has leaves similar to a maple tree, so it has the lobes again where it goes in in different sections. The main difference between a maple tree and a sycamore tree is that the, there isn't much definition between the lobes. So between each point there isn't much of a dip in the middle which helps us tell if it is a sycamore tree instead of a maple tree. Okay, that is it for our deciduous trees today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's a lot of information, so you could always go back um, and see, watch it again if you need to refresh your memory, or you can check the handbook to see if there's any extra information that you may have forgotten. If you're enjoying the Fantastic Forest series, please continue to follow along so you don't miss the rest of the videos. If you've missed any so far, you can always go back in the series and watch them. And if you learned something from this video, please leave a thumbs up so we can see how many people are learning from our lovely Fantastic Forest video series. See you next time.